Ravi, you can connect now. Connected. Sriram, stop the share. Okay, okay Sriram, you can uh, uh, get started. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Namaskaram everyone. My name is Ganesan Sri Ram and I welcome you all to another exciting session of the Jnana Sudha. Here are some of the housekeeping rules. Please switch off your audios and videos. You can post your questions on the chat line in the YouTube. This program is available in the YouTube and for more information, please visit our site which is www.svbfcanada.com. Lastly, if there are any technical difficulties, please bear with us. Uh, now, the program for today will be as follows. A short intro video will follow my uh, introduction. And then Dr. Parameshwar, but the trustee of SVBF, will introduce um, today's artist, uh, speaker, um, on behalf of SVBF. And it will be followed by a short intro by Sri Srikant from the Kannada Sangha. And uh, the main speaker will then uh, give his lecture for about 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, and this will be followed by a question answer session uh, by the questions posed by the viewers and listeners. And uh, this will be conducted by Sri Ravi Shankar. And the program will be concluded with the vote of thanks uh, by Sri Srikant. So uh, let us go to the intro video. Shruti Smriti Purana Nam Alayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavad Padam Shankaram Loka Shankaram Devi Sharade Jnana Prade Jnani Namaste. Our Sanatana Dharma is a finely tuned web of culture, customs, traditions, fine arts, literature being rich with Jnana. Sanatana Dharma is Jnana Kosha, rich treasury of knowledge. Our Guru Parampara, it is a sturdy boat of knowledge, Jnana Nauka, starting from Sadashiva all the way to the present Guru. Asmadacharya Paryanta. It is sailing on the river of knowledge, Jnana Vahini. This Jnana Nauka is carrying all the Gurus, Rishis, Munis and Darshanikas. This boat is led by Jnaneshwari Sharade, who is magnetically attracting all Jeevatmas by sprinkling Jnana Sudha, the nectar of knowledge. Jnana is immortal Amrita. It is sweet and nourishing like Sudha. This Jnana Sudha is essential to every Jeevatma to realize the supreme truth, Brahma Satya. With the blessings of Sharadamba and our Shingeri Sri Jagat Gurus, SVBF is having the vision of conducting Jnana Sudha as an ongoing satsangha with scholars, revered Swamiji's of various ashramas, Artists of various fine arts sharing their knowledge. 
let us take part in sipping this jnana sudha to become a real good human being and to grow as divine being om shri gubhyo namaha respected the dr gulaj kaljagi all sanatan dharma followers and friends it gives me great pleasure today to welcome you all on behalf of shringeri vidya bharati foundation canada for this another edition of jnana sudha presentation we started this series about a year ago and had the privilege of listening to many renowned speakers on sanatana dharma including our shringeri sanidhanam shri vidushekar bharati swami ji as noted in the introductory video in addition to many sanskrit and other well known scriptures we noticed that there are many invaluable writings in various indian regional languages relating to sanatana dharma and its values and virtues accordingly we had the opportunity to listen to some of the well known speakers on other languages like tilkular in tamil janneshwari in marathi jnanapanam in malayalam etc today we are very fortunate to listen to one of the great modern literature in kannada mankutimmana kagga written by dr d v gundappa in 1940s this is a writing which almost every one of us who went to kannada schools have studied at least a little bit some of the verses are impossible to forget for me even after about 50 years as they relate to our behavior responsibility and values who can forget the verses baduku jataka bandi vidhi adara saheba kudure neenu avanu peldante maduvego masanako hogenda mankutimma which means life is a horse carriage you are the horse pulling the carriage vidhi or the supreme being is the driver and you go as he directs it may be to a wedding or maybe to a funeral anyway this is a uh, you know one one verse which i can never forget from uh, mankuti manakagga to speak to us about such a great literature we are today very fortunate to welcome one of the most sought after speakers in kannada dr gulaj kaljagi you look at any spiritually oriented programs feel the sophical oriented programs on kannada tv you will find dr kajagi explaining one aspect or other of virtuous living and he had the good fortune of working with the author of mankuti manakaga himself and many other highly notable um, authors dr kajagi is a scientist teacher and a philosopher he has published numerous papers and books on chemistry and other topics he has developed a unique creative teaching model his series of 15 books called karunalu babalake is a very popular publication today i welcome dr kajagi to speak to us on mankutimana kagga as it relates to sanatana dharma uh, today's program is co-sponsored by our kannada sangha toronto and on behalf of uh, kannada sangha i request the president uh, shri prashant subarna uh, to say a few words of welcome as well prashant um thank you sir um uh, my name is prashant subarna guru bhyo namaha namaskara um i'll be speaking both in english and kannada because mankuti manakaga is very close to my heart um you know you must have seen the flyers it says mankuti manakaga is kannada da bhagavad gita i'd like to just um, uh, quote uh, the first verse from 15th chapter 15th adhyaya the modalne shloka purdha moola madhashakam ashvatham prahuravyam chandamsesya parnani yastam vedasa vedavit that means 
Urdhva Mula, the roots are up there, and then Adha Shaka, the branches are down here, and then whoever realizes this knows the Vedas. That's what the Bhagavad Gita says. And one of the Kaggas, Nama um, Timaguru, DV Gundapnur Bhardiran Tado, Parama Padadali Nodu, Berugal Vyomadali, Dharegili Varambe Kombegalu, Bilalugalu, Chira Jeevi, Vrikshavidu, Vishwa Jeevash Vatha, Parikisu, Idar Arthavan Mankuti Manta. Ade Ritiali, Bhagavad Gita, and Yen concept Helidare, Ade concept Nabago, Tiliada, Kanada, Kavi Rupadali, Kavan and Epic Solova Mankuti Manta or Eltare. Hagen and Epic Kodanta, Ritinali Kodpudidare, Idu, Idikaka, Nanpita, Bandilantan, and Yavaglo, Hapa Bustartini, Nama Mankutiman Kagake, Nama Kanada, Janatege, Nana Manasige, Chikko, Vice in the Vodkomandiranta, Vondo Kriti, Mate, Doctor Guraj Kardigi or Bage, Hero the Tanto Bachikono, our Janjanita Vagide, our Vondo. Oh, sorry, Salpa Echo Bertha. Um, Mate, Doctor Buddha's Kerjigi or Bagay, Sarah, the Tampo Pachikono, Elrugumate Swagata, Sir, Doctor Kerjigi or Gamatome, Preetia Swagata, Hage, welcome to all from on behalf of Kanada Sangha to everybody that is attending this great event. I was really looking forward to this for a long time. Without further ado, let's move on to Dr. Karzik. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. My respectful pranams to all the Sahradayas of uh, Jnana Sudha. I feel myself very fortunate for having had this opportunity of talking to all of you, though in a virtual mode. It is always a great blessing to think of Dr. D.V. Gundappa, whom I always compare with Himalaya, nothing less than Himalaya. Sitting with him, either listening to his discourses or even his jokes, was a learning experience for all of us as young people there. And his Mankotim Manakagga uh, is perhaps one of the greatest books that uh, our literature has seen. I'm not talking of Kannada literature, any literature for that matter. And as my friend Shikan mentioned, I don't know why he did not get Jnana Peta Prashasti. I always say Jnana Peta is poorer by that. Uh, Gundapa does not lose anything, but uh, Dana Peta is unfortunate. In fact, uh, how do you translate Kagga into Kannada, English? It is a quartet, basically all of four lines. And there's a discipline in that. It's called Dviti Akshara Prasa. The second alphabet is always the same in all the four lines. And somebody asked him, how do you do it in English? He only gave an idea, very interesting. It's called Fog Fools Faraj. Hmm. Sorry, I made Prash uh, Prashant. I thought she can. Sorry. Uh, sorry, uh, Prashant. I made a mistake. It's called Foggy Fools Faraj. Faraj or Faraj, as you call, is nothing but a confused mixture or hodgepodge, as you call hodgepodge. DVG called it as that way. This is called Foggy. Foggy means blurred. First of all, he is a fool. He is blurred now, his vision is not clear, and he is talking something confused called hodgepodge. He says, Mankutimana Kagga is nothing but uh, foggy fools Faraj. What he wanted to say was, these are rambling thoughts. Rumination is required for that. Though he called them as something like a confused thoughts, but they are the most beautiful thoughts. In fact, there are 945 quartets in this book. Always it mesmerizes me. My friends, I want you to think with me. Uh, a person, a book, or a thought have a limited lifespan. Suppose a new book comes in the market, everybody says, oh, beautiful book, beautiful book. We read it. After 15, 20 years, I think I read this book earlier. And after 50 years, people may not remember the book also. It happens to people also. It happens situations. Somebody is dead in the house. You wonder, how do we live without him? But the slowly, the pain comes after 10 days. After 10 years, life goes on. After 50 years, people don't even remember. 
This is what happens to everything, book, persons and situations. But for only a few people, only for a few books and few incidents, they remain fresh at all times, at all times. How is that it happens? For example, Swami Vivekananda left his mortal body on July 4, 1902. The number of disciples he had at that time was small. Today, at least, at least 10,000 times of more disciples are there for Swami Vivekananda now. He seems to be more relevant now than before. Same thing happens about Mankuti Manakaga. When DVG published in 1943 for the first time, how many people read Mankuti Manakaga? I do not know. But today, the number of people who read Mankuti Manakaga and get solace is at least uh, 10,000 times more. Even a politician in Karnataka starts quoting Mankuti Manakaga. Why is that? Only a few people, few situations and few books have this privilege. The Bhagavad Gita, for example. I don't know. It will remain relevant for 10,000 years from now. How is that? The books remain uh, immortal. People become immortal. How is that? I learned a lesson in that. If what the person said or what the book says has a universal appeal. It is universal appeal at all times to come. That book become relevant. If I'm talking about a relevant context today, I write about today's situation. It is good today. But after five years or ten years, it becomes irrelevant. But Mankoti Manakaga talks about essential life itself. How life lives. How life progresses. And what is that controls life? What is controls world? All these things are universal and true at all times. That's why Kagga becomes relevant. And as rightly said, this Prashant mentioned, it is called the Bhagavad Gita in Kannada. It is a Bhagavad Gita in Kannada. In fact, I made an experiment earlier in Gokhale Institute, founded by DVG himself. I gave a series of lectures on Mankoti Manakaga and Bhagavad Gita. I compared the quartets of Mankoti Manakaga with the shlokas of Bhagavad Gita, Adhyaya by Adhyaya. And I found beautiful. Many a times, the entire Bhagavad Gita chapter is summarized in one quartet. That kind of uh, brevity DVG had. We'll go on discussing few. I was sharing my view earlier. If you ask me uh, 945 courses to be shared in 45 minutes, it is impossible. I'm feeling like a small child left in a huge uh, toy house. There are thousands and thousands of toys there. One child goes there, finally doesn't know what to pick up. He picks up one and finds another more attractive, leaves this and goes to another one. Finally, perhaps he comes back empty-handed. I do not know. My situation is the same. But nevertheless, I'll make an effort. Like Bhagavad Gita, or like any Upanishadic tradition, we're talking of Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma is based on our Shruti, Smriti and Purana. Now the tradition of Upanishad has been questioning. It starts with a student-teacher dialogue. Student asks questions and teacher answers. And that's how the child assimilates and understands the concepts. Same way, Mankuti Banakagga starts with series of questions. First 40 plus uh, quartets are only questions. And the first itself is magnificent. I can't leave it. I'll read the four quartets in Kannada and then explain in English. Sri Vishnu Vishwadi Mula Maya Lola Deva Sarvesha Parabhamma Nendu Janam Avudanu Kanadode Altiyam Nambihudo Vichitrake Namiso Mankotima. He says, the human race has been praying God. Some people call Sri Vishnu, some people call Vishwadi Mula, some people say Maya Lola. Deva, Sarvesha, Parabhamma. People call by different names. Interesting thing is, none of us have seen that power. We have not seen that. Without seeing, but they believe it. Something magnificent. All through the human race, we say there is God. We have not seen God. We call him by different names. But still we believe there is a power beyond all of us. This faith that there is a power beyond all of us, is magnificent in Sanatana Dharma. In fact, it calls Tat. Tat. Tat means not he or she. It. It. 
We don't know what is it. But there is a power controls all of us. Tat tvam asi. That, that you understand. You are that. You are that. So therefore, the Kagga starts with saying, I have not seen that power. I have not seen that God. I have not seen that tremendous power that we have. But I believe in it. And he says, salute that surprise. Salute that wonderful thing. Salute that vichitra. Vichitra means you don't believe. You don't know what is it. Vichitra means you can't define it, but you have to accept it. You know, I see something. I don't see something, but I feel there is a presence of that. He says, people call by different names, but all of them believe without seeing that there is a power beyond all of us. Let that, that power support us and offer pranams to that. And it's asked next question. How did this world come into being? Adi divasavadavu dendendu miha jagake. Bodhanaya sulabhatege srishti laya kathana. Pada shiragada kurma chache kondire srishti. Sedi kondire laya wa mankutima. One thing I should tell you here. The analogies that DVG gives are fascinating. Absolutely top class. He says, what is the first day of this universe? When it started? What do we do? How do we say? When it world started? Can you fix a date? Like January 1st of this year? No. This world has been there for all times. For how many years it has been there? How many million are we don't know? But you ask a question. Children ask, when the world started? And we give a story. Bodhanaya sulabhatege srishti laya kathana. We have created a story that the world was created on a particular day. World will end on a particular day. Because we are used to a finite life. We are born on some day. We die on some day. Our life is finite. And things we see around us are also finite. Therefore, we want to catch that whole universe into a finite concept. It started. So we, we tell stories. World started like this on this day. World will end on this day on pralaya. And he gives an example, my friend, something magnificent. Pada shiragala kurma chachi kondire srishti sedi kondire laeva mankutima. You have seen a big tortoise. Big tortoise. Tortoise is a very sensitive animal. Very, very sensitive. Maybe the shell is very hard, but the animal inside is very, very sensitive. Moment it feels something is coming towards it, it pulls all its legs and heads inside. Okay, we can visualize all the legs and head it brings inside and the shell is only seen. And even if somebody stamps on that, stamps on that, nothing happens to tortoise. But tortoise cannot see anything outside at that time. And when it feels that nobody is there, slowly it stretches its head and legs outside. Then it starts seeing. He's saying, this is beautiful. We are like that. When we put our eyes and hands outside like a crocodile, the, the tortoise, I can see. When I see, this is Srishti. When I close, pull them, or my sense organs inside, I don't see. Because I'm sleeping at night, I don't know what is happening around. I don't know. For me, that is Laya. That is Pralaya. Laya is closing. Srishti means opening. So when you open your eyes and see, there is Srishti. When you close your eyes and bring your sense organs inside, it is Pralaya. He says, same thing happens to the world also. Uh, when the tortoise pushes its head and legs outside, it is Srishti for it. And when it pulls inside, it is Laya for it. He goes to the extent of saying, whole day, when you bink your eyes, close your eyes for a second, at that time there is Laya. You don't see what is happening. When you open your eyes, there is Srishti. Srishti, Laya are nothing but you are able to see or do not able to, are not able to see. This life has been there for all times to come. It has been there. Another important thing that comes in Sanatana Dharma and Upanishads discussed in a big way is how we get confused with Maya. Huri yurule havalla adodam mabbinali haridadi dantage nolpavam bedari surisuva bemarudita this is a very popular example given in philosophy. When we discuss about Tattva Shastra, this is one of the common examples. Sarparaju, we call Sarparaju. 
a person is walking in the evening is a twilight not very clearly see but he can make some guess uh, images there as he is walking on the road suddenly you find something falling on the road he think it is a snake imagine i am going there on the road i don't know i step on something and jump back oh my god i stepped on a snake i start sweating oh my god i stepped on a snake i don't know whether it bit me oh my god i start feeling the pain and somebody comes with a torch and says no 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 don't worry man it is not snake it is only a rope a rope has fallen in the shape of a snake he dvg gives this example that small little rope which had fallen on the road is not snake it is not snake but in the twilight in the darkness of this it feels that it is moving and the person who saw is scared this is very interesting example he gets really scared he is sweating his heart is beating faster now when he finds that it is only a rope people say laugh at him are you why are you so worried man it is only a rope it is not snake so snake was an image that he thought it was not there it is a maya maya means what yama sa maya one which is not there but appears to be there is maya rope appeared like a snake so what was there was rope only before i went there there is a rope even when i stepped on it is a rope only when bright light also it is rope only but i thought it was snake it is a maya but now the question the dvg is asking is when you saw that you are scared your scare is not maya you are really scared you sweat it out he says the sweating that you had the scare that you had he says life is also world is also like that world is also like that though we say it is a maya there are two kinds of maya as one is shashwata maya and tatpurtik maya one is life is maya all right this world will not exist sometime later for me living in this planet earth earth exists earth is there jari ediru torke gala mankutima the whatever you see the signs around don't ignore them don't ridicule them ayo oh, this world is not there you are there you are feeling it you are interacting with the world all through the day all through your life maybe after my death i don't know what happens to world world may not exist for me but world continues to exist but he says jare yadiru torke gala mankutima the visible things that you see around don't ignore them don't ridicule them they are there they are there except them it is a maya all right it looked like a snake but it was only a rope similarly the world is also like that and the fear that you had the perspiration that you had was real therefore your experiences are real in the short term there is uh, life there is existing of reality but if you think the long term one it is only a maya is an illusion that mean i should comply agree with both of them then the question comes there is a body now i have and so we say atma is inside how are they connected body and atma bhagavad gita talks lot about it nainam chandanti shastrani nainam dhati pavaka plenty of things come in second adhyaya but now question is gagga says in a beautiful way deha vembudu kudure atmana dara rohi vahana van upavasa virise nadadite rohi jagrate tappe yatre sukha sagite sneha eradu kumochita mankutima he says don't ignore the body body is like a horse body look at the analogy body is like the horse well trained and well built horse atma adar arohi atma inside is the uh, rider body is the horse and atma is the rider he asked a question between the two which is important can you make the horse fast don't give anything food to it what will happen horse will not be able to run what can the atma do atma can be effective only when the body is strong if the horse is fasting if horse is not able to no has no energy it cannot run so atma cannot do anything then okay horse is very powerful that is strong but the rider is weak supposing he is not conscious he is not aware he is little careless what will happen is again they will fall down and have an injury 
So therefore, both are required. Rohi jagrate tappe. The atma pradnya that we have, the moment you lose atma pradnya, the rider becomes weak. If you don't care for your body, horse becomes weak. You cannot ignore both of them. You require a strong horse and a very careful atma there. So body is an instrument through which atma performs. Without body, atma cannot do anything. And body without atma has no existence. What a lovely way of saying. Without body, atma cannot do anything. And without atma, body cannot exist. As long as there is Chaitanya inside, atma inside, it is called as a living entity. The moment the atma leaves, it becomes a dead body. Even if it is the highest level, you can imagine the president of a country. And we always say, oh, he is there, she is there. We all talk about he, he is doing this, he said like this, he spoke like this. The moment the person is dead, we don't say he is coming to home, coming home. No. Immediately, the moment the, the moment they declare the person is dead, we say his body will be brought to home. We never say that he is brought home. Body is brought home. Suddenly, what changed uh, from he to that? He says the presence of Atma. If the Atma is conscious, very active, and I'm aware of the Atma, his rider is strong. If my body is good enough, it is a good instrument. So both instrument and the rider should be together. Only when he says, Sneha Yaraduku Muchita Mankutima, you require friendship between the two. There's a thorough understanding between the body and the Atma, then the life becomes beautiful. Parmeshwar Bhatji mentioned about the verse that he likes most. Sir, I tell you, this the verse that you mentioned is the essence of the entire Indian philosophy. Indian philosophy. Unfortunately, we don't look at it that way. We always say, Baduku Jataka Bandi Vidhi Adara Saheba Kudare Neen Avanu Pel Dante Payani Garu Madhu Vego Masanako Hoganda Kadagodu Pada Kusiye Nela Vihudu Mankutima. Again, a beautiful analogy here. Baduku, life is a horse carriage. Life is a horse carriage. And who is the owner? Vidhi. My fate. My fate is boss, the sahiba, the owner of this cart. Kudare Neen, the human being, is the horse. I am the horse. Please see, Baduku, life itself is a horse carriage. I am the horse and the owner is the fate. We call Daiva or God, whatever you call. Who directs? Where should I go? Horse cannot decide. Cart will not be able to decide. All decisions are made by the boss, the owner of the cart. He will invite the customers. When the customers come and sit, if they ask you to go to a marriage function, you have to go to marriage function. You have to go to crematorium, you have to go to crematorium. Horse has nothing to do. Many people interpret this as saying helplessness. What do I do? We do exactly what God says. God gives me this, I'll take it. If it does not give me, I feel sad and remain there. I can't do anything. It is not so. It is not so. DVG is talking about one of the most important principles of Indian philosophy. Indian philosophy revolves around three things, most important. Jiva, Jagatu, Ishwara. I am there. I am there in this world. I am a Jiva. I am living in this world, Jagatu. I know that I am living in a Jagat because I am interacting with the world all through. Jiva, Jagatu, I am aware of it. But there is something more, the Ishwara, which maintains all of it. So I am a Jiva living in a Jagatu controlled by Ishwara. Jiva, Jagatu, Ishwara. The relationship between the three forms the basis of the entire Indian philosophy. Jiva, Jagat, Ishwara. The relationship between them is more important. And now DVG brings in a mesmerizingly beautiful way. He says, you, Jiva, is a horse. The world around you is the horse carriage. Is it not right? Horse becomes useful only when there is a horse carriage, this life. And then there is somebody who controls it, Vidhi. Vidhi means God or fate, whatever you call it. He is the Ishwara. Jiva Jagat Ishwara. What is the relationship between them? Though he controls everything, he gives respect to you, maintains you well, 
It is the boss duty to see that the horse is well maintained. And he also maintains the horse carriage. If the horse carriage is broken, you cannot get customers. If the horse is not able to stand up, there are no customers. That means Ishwara will ensure is such a great solace to all of us. There is Ishwara taking care of all of us, the Jagattu and the Jiva. And then he says, go wherever he takes you because he is the boss. He takes care of you. See, I, I give an analogy, my friends. When you are very small, you are three or four or five or six year old, your family went for a trip elsewhere. Did you as a child bother about whether reservation is done properly? Hotel booking is done properly. Vehicle is proper. Did you check? No. Father is there. No. Mother is there. She will take care of it. She will take care of food. Father will take care of my comforts. I just have to go with them and enjoy the show. Wherever they take me. They take me to the seashore, fine. They take me to the hilltop, it is fine. I'll go. Because I have faith in my father and my mother. Is it not right? The child goes with that infinite faith in the father and the mother. The Kagga is saying that. Why are you worried? Where are you going? Whether you're going to crematorium or to the marriage function, don't worry about it because there is Ishwara there. Ishwara. And it is job, his job to maintain both the card and the horse. I'm the horse. I'm a Jiva. And there is world here, Jagattu. And Jiva, Jagattu is maintained by the boss or the god, Daiva, whatever you call. He is managing all that. Therefore, I should not have mistrust. The problem with us is we don't trust. We say we trust, but you don't trust really. Not 100%. And a very funny experience, I should say that. When uh, my children, my well, second child was very young, was about two year old. I had gone to my native place. It's a huge house there. And we we're about to come back. And suddenly I did not see my second son. Where, where did the fellow go? At the time, this time he is going elsewhere. My wife went on looking for him. I said, let me keep the suitcase in the car dicky. I brought these two suitcases outside. Now you can visualize. This is an old traditional big house in a village. This is the main door. On either side of the main door, there are stone platforms. We call katte. People sit and talk there. As I came out, I saw on the left side on the platform, a little fellow standing there. I shouted, shouted to my wife, don't worry, this fellow is here only. You know what happened? This two-year-old fellow saw me. I don't know what happened to him. He said, Appa, and jumped towards me. He just jumped. My heart stopped beating. I had two suitcases in my hand. If I don't hold him, his face will hit the stone on the opposite side. It will be bad damage for him. I just dropped the two suitcases and grabbed him, held him. My heart was beating fast. I said, you fellow, you jumped like that. If I had not held you, what would happen? He smiled as only a child can smile and told me, I knew that he would catch me. I knew that he would catch me. That was in for one of the turning point in my life. With what faith the fellow jumped? The child did not see that suitcase are in my hand. Can my father hold me? Nothing. He jumped with infinite faith that father would not leave him. And it was my job to hold him. My job to hold him. I did hold him. Same thing is true with life also. He says, Last sentence is most beautiful. Don't worry, man. Even if your leg slips, you'll not go to Patala. You'll be here only. God will be there to support you. Therefore, have that infinite faith. If I can jump into the arms of God with that kind of faith that a child jumps into the father's arms, I don't have to worry. Jumping is my job. Holding is his job. He says, assurance. But the kusi and Allah vihu dumankutima, don't worry, man, you are not going down. There is earth there, earth hold you. So, therefore, the jiva, jagattu, ishwara, the sambandha relationship between them is the basis of our sanatana dharma. And that DVG says in four lines, I knew that brevity is a virtue, but this kind of brevity I had never seen. Mentioning the whole philosophy in four lines Jataka Bandi, horse carriage, horse, and the, uh, the uh, owner of the horse come compared to. Jiva, Jagattu and Ishwara and the relationship between them and the infinite faith that Jeevi should have in the Ishwara so that you don't have to worry. And wherever it takes me is good for me. Nothing wrong because he is, he is my father. He is my mother. She is my mother. So wherever they take me, they'll do always good for me. The next one is still more beautiful. 
in fact the whole taitri upanishad is condensed into four lines it looks very simple anna datura kinta chinna datura tikshna chinna datura kinta hennu gandolavu mannanaya dahavu yellakam tikshna tama tinnuvudu atmavane mankutimma he makes five levels the the abram maslow we call map maslow's hierarchical needs he made five levels physiological levels then security needs first physiological needs roti kapda makan then security needs after security needs love and affection needs then you have got uh, self esteem needs and finally the self actualization this was so beautifully told to us thousands of years before in taitri upanishad the pancha koshas annamaya kosha pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha vidyanamaya kosha final comes sachidananda kosha and maslow could not think of the sixth one the five only and dvg says that five levels in four lines and much before maslow ever mentioned about it anna datura kinta chinna datura tikshna first is desire to have food first desire is full physiological needs first man wants food and food can be quenched easily supposing i'm terribly hungry i may eat two chapatis or three chapatis four i say sat enough enough i can't eat more the desire for food can get quenched early immediately in half an hour if stomach will be full and somebody wants to get no 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 i have no place i can't eat more enough you are satisfied then come the chinna dhatva chinna means gold the desire for gold how much gold is enough four chapatis are enough how much gold is enough we don't know the greed becomes more he says the desire to acquire gold is more intense than acquiring food the reason is gold is security this is food anna is food then security comes and only when these two are full people say now that you got a job and you got everything stable now why don't you get married marriage comes only after that you get education your basic needs are fulfilled and you got a job stable job then you can get married gandu hennolavu chinna datura kinta hennu gandolavu more than the desire for gold there is a density of love between the male and the female boy and the girl there are two aspects in this my friends let us not make it so simple the attraction between male and female is not just physical it just not physical it may start with physical attraction it will not remain there for a long time the question is gandu hen nolavu the love between the male and the female is more intense than gold imagine the couple are staying together one of them one of the husband or the wife is sick very sick she requires medical treatment and is very expensive what will the person other person think husband or the wife think dispose of all the gold sell off this i want to save that life is it not right love towards the other person is more intense than the love towards gold forget gold we can earn gold later on but this life is more important to me is it not right that's what he says the affection between the husband and wife male and female is more intense than that of gold then finally the fourth one comes mannanaya dahavu yellakam tikshnatama the desire for appreciation oh i should be respected i should be called i should be said you are a great man sir you are wonderful everybody wants that kind of appreciation is it not right people go behind this mad respect people want to respect people want all kind of felicitations and all that this kills the last sentence is beautiful mannanaya dahavu yellakam tikshnatama it is more intense than all of them food security love affection this desire for appreciation craving for affection appreciation is so intense than all of them but when you go behind that appreciation or admiration of people we call kirti shani uh, the kirti that we say get it kills the atma you don't even realize there is a atma inside you go for appreciation and suddenly you feel you are so big you are so big You, are, you, you become uh, omniscient, omnipresent. You think you are so, but when you think of yourself as a big person, you are destroying the Atma inside. Don't miss it. In fact, the Taitri Upanishad and the Maslow's hierarchical needs are summarized in four sentences. All the five levels: Anna, then Chinna, gold, security, love and affection between male and female, and finally self-esteem. 
pride and last one atma atma pradnya is the last one all five levels are mentioned in just four lines how do you live in this world this is something more beautiful my friends extraordinary he says this is again essence of bhagavad gita in bhagavad gita dhyana shloka we have got one saying prapanna parijataya totra vetre ka panaye dhyana dhyana mudraya krishnaya gita amruta duhe namaha krishna is a demonstration of how to live one of the most practical demonstrations of how to live in one hand in left hand he has got the whip whip he, he is jagadoddhara you know jagadoddhara and we call jagadeka jagadeka daiva but he doesn't hesitate to wash the horses of his own disciple and become a charioter for him karma is most important on the left hand with the whip he demonstrates you cannot leave karma even if i am the one the, the creator of the whole universe i still have to do my karma he holds a whip in the left hand on the right hand he has got jnana mudra my friends i want you to watch it very carefully this is jnana mudra jnana mudra is analyzed so beautifully imagine this is this is my hand the thumb represents god and this four finger represents you the life human being jiva jivi the remaining three fingers are the trigunas sattva rajas and tamas remember fing five hand is always like this only the thumb is out and all four are together this jiva is in touch with the three gunas trigunas whichever is more makes this feel like that i give an example think of a sandalwood piece normally people keep the sandalwood piece in a cloth keep it in the cloth for some time after 15 days you please see the cloth also has got a fragrance that means if it is in the company of sandalwood it get the sandalwood fragrance supposing there is kerosene uh, drop on that it smells kerosene if it is in the company of kerosene it gets kerosene smell company of sandalwood it is the sandalwood smell now the same thing this jiva which is there is the company of all the three trigunas it gets the same quality but then if he wants to join god what should he do he should leave the company of three that mean leave the trigunas and we should leave ahankara slowly bend down when the person slowly bends down god also comes up look at this beautiful the person the jiva has to leave the trigunas it will leave the three trigunas and slowly bend down by leaving ahankara god also comes and holds the hand then it becomes a circle it becomes a circle inside this circle circle is the only object which has no beginning and no end you become the god god merges with you or you merge with god it is called jiva paramatma aikya it happens only when you leave the gunas and bend down leaving ahankara krishna is demonstrating on one whip one hand he has got the whip other he has and got the jnana mudra karma and this to go together and dvg summarizes this philosophy into four lines how to live in this world yerado konegala ni madu manadala yadi yerado konegala ni madu manadala yadi hora konayali loga ratagala nadu virame sobbane neenu olamaneya shantiyali hora yoga sutra vidu mankutimma he says in your mind make two two rooms make two compartments two rooms in the outer room play the world in play in the world do your duty you are father to some you are wife to some you are teacher to some you are a student to some you are a colleague to some you are a boss to some you are assistant to some the world has given you certain responsibilities play it honestly do your work karma siddhanta in the outer room please play the role very honestly don't hesitate to do that they say ayo oh, i don't want to work at all in the world what is there one day i'm going to die don't do that in the outer room do your duty sincerely and truly hora koneyali loga ratagala nadu loga means public you are in public you are in society play the rules thoroughly play you do do your job thoroughly but then don't sit there only beautiful it says 
ಎರಡು ಕೋಣೆಗಳ ನೀ ಮಾಡು ಮನದಾಲಯದಿ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಟು ರೂಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಔಟರ್ ರೂಮ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ದ ರೋಲ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಔಟರ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ವೀರಮಿ ಸೊಬ್ಬನೆ ನೀನು ಒಳಮನೆಯ ಶಾಂತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸಿಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ದ ರೋಲ್ ಬಟ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸಿಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎ ರೂಮ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ವೀರಮಿ ಸೊಬ್ಬನೆ ನೀನು ಒಳಮನೆಯ ಶಾಂತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಂಪ್ಲೇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೈ ಲೈಫ್ ವೈ ಡಿಡ್ ಐ ಕಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಸೊ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲಿ ಕೋಹಂ ಕುತಾಯಾತ ಹೂ ಎಮ್ ಐ ವೈ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಕಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಡೂ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ಕಾಂಟೆಂಪ್ಲೇಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಮೈ ಲೈಫ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ಇಂಟ್ರಾಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇ ಸೇಸ್ ವಿರಮಿ ಸೊಬ್ಬನೆ ನೀನು ಟೇಕ್ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಾಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿರಮಿ ಸೊಬ್ಬನೆ ನೀನು ಒಳಮನೆಯ ಶಾಂತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೊ ಮಚ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ರೂಮ್ ಗೋ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಾಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮೈ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ the difference between indian and western philosophy normally the scholars say is western world is more outward looking i'm happy i require a big bungalow i require good car i good facility good wife good position i find my job outside me i find my job outside me this is the western outlook the eastern and the aesthetic look of uh, indian philosophy is look outside okay but look inside that is more important there is more joy inside joy is not in the materials joy is in you think of a 3 month old child 2 month old child have you seen watch the child suddenly child starts smiling why is the child smiling does it require increment it require promotion it requires a car or a bungalow nothing the child is happy the indian philosophy says joy is not outside in the material joy is inside you the short kagga is saying make two rooms in the outside room play the world role that you have to play in the world as whatever role you have got sincerely but then don't stay there alone come back and think about your life then it says combining these two is what a yoga yoga means joining yuj yoga comes from the word yuj mean to join so join these two as krishna did it one hand whip other hand dhyana mudra he managed both karma marga and dhyana marga you do that together uh, and he mentions in just four lines i don't know how much i can do uh, there is another verse which is so magnificent again a sense of ishavasha ishavasha upanishad i have written a book on ishavasha recently anna unu vandu kel adanu beisida neer ninna duditada bemaro parara kanniro ತಿನ್ನು ನೀ ಜಗಕ್ಕೆ ತಿತ್ತ ತಿನ್ ತಿನ್ನಲೆ ತನಿತ ಮಿಕ್ಕೂಟ ಜೀ ಜೀರ್ಣಿಸಿದ ಋಣಶೇಷ ಮಂಕುತಿಮ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಫುಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ಮೋರ್ ಹಾರ್ಶ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ದನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಫುಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಫುಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಎ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಸ್ವೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಟಿಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಎಲ್ಸ್ did you deserve it have you taken it out of somebody's uh, toiling or is come from your own efforts please think over whether this food has come from your own sincere efforts or by making others toil and suffer he says the next sentence is beautiful tinnoni jagake tinali tanita how much you give it to the world only that much you can eat that means what you eat depends on what you are given to the society outside taitri upan says same thing tena tektena bhunjita magrada kasya sidvanam you can eat whatever you can give it outside whatever you give to society otherwise you become terribly selfish you only want for yourself do not bother about society you don't contribute to society life has no meaning he says tinnu ni jagake tinali tanita how much you are given to world to eat how much you are given to society only that much you can eat and say the next one mikuta what is the remaining food that you eat is jirnesa the runashesha mankutima runashesha this runa you will carry to the next birth and jirnesa do you can't digest it if you have got something without your efforts by somebody's effort you took it away you cannot digest it you will carry it for the next life and suffer all through he says jirnesa the runashesha mankutima how the isha was operation tena tena bhunjita whatever you give only that much you can eat 
because the whole world belongs to Isa, Isha. Isha, Vasya, Midam, Sarvam, Etkin, Jagatyam, Jagatam. The whole world is because of that. And the next verse, he talks about what is Brahma Darshana. Indian philosophy is always talking about Brahma Darshana, Brahma Sakshatkara. That is the ultimate realization of our life. He says so beautifully, Brahma Nusandhana, Loka Sandhana Dali. Brahma Darushana Vella, Jeeva Rupa Dali. Brahma Nubhava Deha, Karana Nubhava Galali, Marma Vidu Mukti Gelo Mankutima. Do you want Mukti? You want Moksha? You want to have Brahma Sandhana. You want to have interaction with Brahma. Where do you get it? He says beautifully, Brahma nu sandhana loka sandhana dari. Your interaction with God is with interaction with the people in the society. When you interact with them, interact with this world, you are interacting with God because God has created this world. It is God's creation. Therefore, interacting with the world, it is Brahma nu sandhana loka sandhana dari. If Brahma sandhana is nothing but sandhana with the loka. Then Brahma Darushana Vella Jeeva Rupa Dali. I can't say more beautiful than this. You want to have the darshan of Brahma? Don't wait for something else. Don't think that it happens in temple. Don't think it happens outside elsewhere. Brahma Darushana Vella Jeeva Rupa Dali. If you want to have darshan of Brahma, look into the eyes of other person. Other person along with you. Look in, there is God there. Brahma darshana is possible only when with Jiva darshana, Jiva rupa darshana. You can see Brahma only in the Jiva form or everyone because as you say, Isha, Vasya, Midam, Sarvam, everything is Isha only. Therefore, I must see the same Atma in everybody. Brahma darshana vella, Jiva rupa dali, Brahmanubhava deha, Karananubhava galali. If I want to have the Brahmanubhava experience of God experience, how do I have it? I can experience only through my sense organs. That's what he says. Deha karananu bhavakadali. My body and my indriyas. I can see, I can feel, I can do. The whole body, my, myself, I as an individual can experience anything only with the body and these indriyas. Therefore, brahmanu bhava is nothing but experience through my own sense organs. Marma vidu makti galo mankutima. This is the secret of mukti. That means try to see God in every human being around you. Try to see the presence of God in the whole world. And then most important is experience that through your own sense organs and body. The loka and the people experience through the body. And that is the secret of mukti. And to get it, I require samskara. Samskara is another important aspect of our uh, sanatana dharma. We talk of sodasha samskara. He says, samskara is most important. Diviji says, Samanya rupa dali, samsari vesha dali, swami nin nedage barabahudu vara nede. Mahime kambuda nyanege samskara virabeku. Tamasige vara velli mankutima. I want to see God. I want to see God. God will come to you. Don't worry. He will come to you. How does he come? I don't know. Samanya rupa dali. He come like an ordinary man to you. Or samsari vesha dali. He may come like another samsari to you. Swami ni nedege barabahudu varanide. He comes to you to give you boons. God comes to you in different forms and comes to you. He wants to give you boons. But mahime kambode ni nege samskara virbeku. And for you to know that presence of God in that person, you require samskara. If you don't have samskara, it happened. You have to heard in the stories of Kanakadasa. Uh, the, the Vasaraja was performing puja and there comes a dog. And he said, dog, dog, throw the dog out, throw the, hit the stone, throw, throw the stone at dog and make it go away. How can it come in the temple place or puja place? Uh, then Kanaka had promised that I'll show you God at the time of Arati. Vasaraja smiled and uh, the others asked, where is God? He said, God came in the form of dog. You didn't realize it. They said, no, Vasaraja said, yes, I could see God there. I should see Krishna there. He's coming in the God form. Next day, again, they waited. Again, at the Arati time, this time a cobra came, a snake came there. And everybody ran away. And next they asked, well, you did, you didn't, God did not come. Only snake came. He said, God came in the form of a snake. For others, those who did not have samskara, they saw, saw only a dog and a snake. 
But the one who had samskara like Vyasaraja and Kanakadasa and Purandaradasa, they could see Krishna in every form. That's what it says. Mahime kambade nyanige samskara virbeku. If God comes, it's okay. But to realize God, you should have samskara. Tamasi ki varavelli mankotima. If you are a tamasi, there is no boon. There is no boon. God cannot give you. Unless you are samskara, you can't do anything else. I think uh, I'll mention one or two more. Something more beautiful. This is extraordinary, my friends. Kantere du nodu chit sattva murti and ritya. Kanmuchi nodu nishchela shuddha sattva. Unmukhano ni niralu jagake irutira laga krunmadhya dali shanti mankutima. This is one of the most beautiful verses that I can find. Kantere du nodu chit sattva murti and ritya. When you open your eyes, you can see the whole dance of the universe. The world is celebrating. It's a glittering world. So much of glitter in the world. Kan tere du nodu. Open your eyes and see the glittering form of the world. Kan muchi nodu. Nishchala shuddha sattva. Close your eyes and look inside. The nishchala shuddha sattva is there inside you. The sattva is having a dance outside and is silent inside you. Unmukhano ni neradu jagaki irutira laga. If you are conscious of both, seeing that dance of God outside and the image of silent God inside you, hrun madhya dali shanti mankutima, you get eternal peace in the heart now because you are able to see God in both, outside and inside. This is what our Narayana Sukta says beautifully. Antar bahishatat sarvam vyapya Narayana sthitaha. Both inside and outside there is God. There is an image given in the Upanishad. Take a pot, empty pot and take water in the pot. Go to the river or some ocean and fill it up with water. Is it not right? When you dip, first of all, when the pot is there and fill water, pot goes on saying, this is my water, this is my water, this is my water. But when you dip it in the ocean, it realizes, my God, what is there is how large and I have only small things inside. I become one. What is water outside is the water inside me. That's what I say. Antar bahishatat sarvam vyapya narayana sita. God, God is there both outside and inside. That's what it says. Open your eyes and see the glittering world outside. That is also a role of God. Close your eyes and see inside. There is presence of divinity inside you. If you can understand the reality of these two, then hurunadhya dali shanti mankutima will be happy at all times. Then... Uh, I think I can take another five minutes more because uh, that will be 45 minutes. What is moksha? The ultimate, we have got purusharthas. Artha. Start with uh, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. First start with dharma, artha, kama and moksha. Dharma and moksha are the boundaries. If artha and kama are within the boundaries of dharma and moksha, you are safe. Like a river, the bund of the river should be strong. Then the water can flow. If the bund is weak, the water rushes at a place where it should not go and creates havoc. So therefore, if the boundaries of dharma and moksha are firm, then what? You can have artha and kama. Nobody rejects. Our sanatana dharma never rejects artha and kama, but they should be within the limits of dharma and moksha. Ultimate realization is called moksha. What is moksha? DVG defines moksha in such a beautiful way. Moksha dasha yolu ati aturate valitalla. Shiksha bahu kahala nadeya de moksha villa. Laksha tappa de charisu samanya dharma gala moksha sota siddha mankutima. I want to get moksha. I want to get mukti. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a great hurry. It says, there is a beautiful uh, one of the stories in uh, Upanishads. Once Narada came to earth and from, went to, into a forest area where somebody was doing penance and tapasya. That man got up and said, Narada Maharshi, you have come. Tell me how many more births I should be here. How many janmas I should take to get moksha. Narada looked up and this man was sitting under a big banyan tree banyan tree. Narada smiled and said, I have checked up with God. You will have as many lives as the number of leaves in the tree here. Banyan tree. This man said, my God, so many leaves. 
That means I have to take so many births. There is no point in doing penance. He went away. He stopped tapasya and went away. Narada went further and found another man doing tapasya. And he also asked the same question. Narada Maharshi, how many lives I should take further? I want to get moksha. I want to get out of this life, birth, birth and death uh, chakra, samsara chakra. I want to get out and go. How many lives I have to take? Narada looked up. He was sitting under a tamarind tree. You know, tamarind leaves are very small. And uh, this man said, don't worry, I checked up. You will have as many births as the number of leaves the tamarind tree has. That man started dancing. Why? He said, there is some relief, no? At least after so many lives, I get moksha. I don't have to lose hopes. I'll try. I'll try. Continue to try. The first fellow, when he thought of bunny and leaves, he said, no, I can't. In so many lives, I have no way. And left it and went away. But this man says, uh, the number of leaves, okay. Let there be million, billion, billion. I'll take lives. But I can, at least I'm sure there's some moksha is there at the end of it. That's what DVG says. Moksha daseyulu. In the anticipation of what? Don't be in a great hurry. You'll not get it. Because shikshe bahukala nadeya de moksha villa. Shikshe does not mean punishment. Shikshana. Unless you have more shikshana for a long time, you can't get moksha. Even to get Olympic gold medal easy, you struggle for 20 years, 15, 16 years, non-stop. Then there is a possibility of a gold medal. You have to work so hard. That's what I said. Shikshana has to go on for a long time so that you can get moksha. What should I do to get moksha? His answer is so simple. Laksha tappadachari so samanya dharma gala. Whatever you are supposed to do in life, that is your duty. Do your duty systematically without somebody reminding you. Do on your own and do it. Laksha tappadacharisu. Don't take your eyes off the duties. Continue to do your duty for a long time. Continue to do it. Moksha sota siddha mankutima. Moksha will come to you. Moksha will come to you only when you do your normal duties regularly. That means he says, Moksha is nothing but doing your duties sincerely, continuously and for a long time. Then you get the goal. This is exactly what uh, Bhagavad Gita says. Many people asked me yesterday evening I had a session with somebody, they asked me a question. Sir, without expecting, how can I do it, sir? Do I mean to say I work for one full month without getting salary? Or I want to go to some place I don't have hope of going, I will still go? How can you work without uh, goals? I said, no. Bhagavad Gita does not say that. It only says, Your job is only to work. If you work properly, goal will come. Imagine you are driving on the road, you are following the traffic rules and you are very conscious of what is happening, you are driving carefully. If you drive carefully, you will surely reach the goal. There is no problem at all. Focus on the work. If you do good work, good results will come. If you don't work properly, good results will not come. If you are only thinking of results and not focusing on your work, you will never get the goal. Karmanne vadikarha. You have got right to do work. Work properly. Don't worry about results. Results will come. There is no problem. Results depend on the work. Say same thing he says. Moksha dasi yodu ati aturate valitella. If you continue to do your work properly, goal will come. Moksha will come. Will come. And uh, I think the last one I should take. This is something magnificent, my friends. In summary of all that. Bedidudan even Ishwara nemba natchilla. Bedalu Vulitau the Yambadra Rivila Kudi Bandu Dene Nin Avan Icha Yandukulu Nidu Gadegati Yanumankutima. In fact, I want to get blessings of God. It is not guaranteed that God will give you whatever you ask for. Bedi Dhanu, Ivanu Ishwara Nemba Nachilla. Whatever you ask, not guaranteed that the God will give you. He may not give you, he may give you. We are not sure whether God gives me whatever I want. And second, I don't even know what to ask. We have seen in the Puranas, Bhasma Sura asked for a boon. Did it do good for him? Nothing. Hiranyakashipu asked for a boon from Brahma. I should not be killed here, 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 here. Under conditions he put, finally it didn't happen. I don't even know what is good for me. I'm so poor. 
If God comes before me and says, what do you want, child? I don't know what to ask. First is, it's not guaranteed that God will give you everything. Secondly, I die myself, do not know what to ask God. Which is good for me, I do not know. What is good for me? I think it is good. It may be bad for me. Finally, he says, Kudi bandhudane ni navani chayandu kolo. Whatever happens to you, please consider is the desire of God. This is one way of finding peace in our life today. We always go on interpreting, why should it happen to me? Why should it happen to me only? Of all people, why it should happen to me? Don't worry about it. He says, whatever happens, you think it's a desire of God. Again, I come back to the same one. If you have the complete faith in God, you will not question the decision of God. When a small child goes on a trip, it depends on the father and the mother completely, 100%. Similarly, if I have faith in God, I accept what comes to me. I remember this happening to one person, very great philosopher in Karnataka, very great philosopher, but many people do not know him. Uh, he is a saint. He lost his son. And in, the son had come to talk to the father. He went out and had an accident. Just five minutes after he talked to the father, he died. And just three days later, I met this man. He had come to another place. I asked him, Swami, I, I learned that your son died. He must be in terrible grief. Son is a 40-year-old man and he dies. And in a rude shock, especially in the old days, to seeing your children die before, he is a great, great suffering. But you know, this man was so cool. And he said, no, no, no. What happened is he stopped, came, he got down. He stopped, came, he got down. Imagine you're traveling by train or traveling by bus. When my place comes, I get down and go away. Somebody place comes, he gets down and goes away. It is rule. And this man is telling in such a natural way. No, no, he stopped, came, he got down and went. His time is over. My journey is still further. I don't know when, when my time comes. If you can take with that kind of equanimity, I asked him, how is it possible for you? He said, look, who gave me life? God gave me life. Who gave me son? God gave me son. He gave whenever he wanted and took it whenever he wanted. So why should I argue about it? It is so easy to say, but practicing is very, very difficult. But he says that, whatever happens, you think it is the desire of God. Make your heart strong confident, completely filled with trust in God. If you do that, your life will be more beautiful. I'll stop at this stage because I've completed 45 minutes and when the questions are there, I may take further. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Karjagi, for a very inspiring speech on Dr. D.V. Gundapas Mankuti Manakaga. Although it's about uh, 70, 80 years ago that this was written, the quartlets and the examples, analogies that Dr. Devi Gundapa writes in his work is yes. applicable even today even and today. probably many, many years to come. Yes. Thank you so much for bringing, explaining the spirit of Mankuti, uh, Mankuti Manakada in a very beautiful way. Thank you. So uh, I, I just love the analogy you gave for uh, uh, the explanation of Jnana Mudra and again, the story about attaining moksha, these are all simply great, amazing. Uh, I have listened to many of your videos on, uh, watched your videos on many subjects, but what got me hooked on to this was your video, which was very first video I listened and watched is about your grandfather who was a postmaster yes. and yes. a teacher. That's yes. a great video that got me hooked on to all your <laughs> other videos and I'm still enjoying it. And I'm sure yes. many would be enjoying the same even today. Thank you. Uh, and I'm so grateful that we had this privilege of uh, you speaking to us exclusively to us. And uh, we would be honored if you can uh, plan a trip to Toronto sometime when you're yeah. on a next visit to North America and give a series of lectures on Mank Mankuti Manakaga. We will be honored. Uh, actually, people are so uh, have, have listened to this so well and got Every, all the quartlets explained so well by you that they don't have any questions. <laughs> and in fact, I have only uh, appreciation for the great work. Somebody has written that Mahat uh, Karjagi, I can listen to him all day. Uh, and somebody has said this Pravachana is simply amazing. Eye opener. All these great words about this topic today. So 
uh, without much uh, <clears throat> taking much time, I will uh, request Srikant to continue with his uh, vote of thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I can uh, start my video. Um, Srikant, uh, can, I, can I get one second, please? Yeah, sure. There is just one question that came up just now. Mm -hmm. The last line says, Sharanu Vishwamadani, Sharanu Vishwatmadadali. Can you please explain this? Huh. This again, uh, essence of Isha Vashya uh, In fact, I am an Atma. I have an Atma. There is a conflict in the Indian philosophy, I mean, uh, understanding of philosophy. I am a person. I have Atma. Another person also has an Atma. That means there are as many Atmas as there are Dehas, bodies. But there is also called Paramatma. It is something like this. Sharana Hogu Vishwatma Dali Mankuti Mother, the last sentence he wanted is, that means I am an Atma, all right, but I am a small fragment of that Atma. I'll give you an interesting example. It makes more clearer. Purnamada Purnamidat Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Shishate is a Shanti Mantra of uh, Ajurveda. It says if you take full from full, full remains. Modern science says is nonsense. X minus X is zero. If you take something full from something, it cannot remain. When I asked the same question in my Gurukula, when I was going to Gurukula and childhood, I asked the same question. My master said, Come here. He asked me to take a small little lamp, earthen lamp, and there was Goddess Saraswati statue there. There's a lamp burning in front of the statue. He said, go and light your lamp. You can please visualize it. I took my little lamp and got my lamp lit with that lamp. Then he asked me a question. What happened to your lamp? Is it burning full? He said, yes, sir. Is that burning full? Or by taking away, has the intensity of that light come down? He said, no, the same burning thing. You took the Purna lighter from that light and the Purna still remains. And he told me, please remember, this is true with two things. One is light, other is knowledge. Take the full thing, it still remains. But this is one level. You go beyond that. There is a Paramatma which creates all of that. And we are an essence of that, a spark of that. That finally, what this spark will happen? It will go and merge with that. Because in law of conservation of energy, nothing is created and nothing is lost. So therefore, when my Atma is there within, confined within my body, I call it is my Atma. But when I die, this Atma goes and merges with the universe. It's yeah. a Vishwatma. So therefore, my Atma merges with Vishwatma. Vishwatma, all my life, my Atma has to merge with the Vishwatma. That's what he's saying in the last line. Let this Atma merge with the Vishwatma. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Very well explained. Thank you, sir. You can't? Yeah. Thank you, Ravi. Um, respected uh, Dr. Kuraj Karjagevre and viewers. Um, today, I am pleased and uh, actually feel very privileged to propose vote of thanks on behalf of uh, Gyana Sudha. Uh, you know, perhaps there is no Karnataka who has not heard about Mankuti Manakaga or Sri DVG. And being a Kannadiga, I am no exception to this. You know, as Paramji mentioned in the welcome speech, you know, um, you know, stanzas like, you know, Baduki the Jataka Bandi Vidya Dara Saheba, Hula go better than Manege Maligayago, you know, are the ones many of us have learned in our childhood. And, you know, and we have enjoyed it and we continue to recite them in our minds every now and then very fondly. But today, uh, Dr. Karjagevare, you have opened our eyes into the profoundness of this philosophical work. You know, you have reminded us that every stanza in this beautiful piece of work <clears throat> requires deep deliberation and has a very deep message. Each and every quartet you have picked up are really the pearls of this this work. You know, every quartet you have given, you have taken as example, has given me a very new meaning, right? And you know, as Paramji pointed out in the beginning, one of the purpose of this series of lectures, you know, bringing in all the regional regional philosophical work 
uh, is to see how the regional philosophical works connect to the Sanatana Dharma, right? And in your speech, you have given us um, many, many examples of that. Um, you know, it, before coming into this thing, I was more thinking like, you know, there's a Kagga and Bhagavad Gita connections. Um, you know, I have heard about it, although I haven't learned a lot myself about it. But you went way beyond. You have made the connection to Upanishads, you know, the Taitri Upanishads, the Ishavasya Upanishads, apart from the Bhagavad Gita connections. You know, the you started off with the style of the Kagga, with the questioning and how it connects with the Upanishad, you know, uh, and and Avichitra Kanamiso Mankutima, starting with that. And and then, you know, the how Atma and the body are connected with the uh, Deva Vembudu Kudure, Atma Rarohi. Amazing, very, very beautiful. And in connection with the Titri Upanishad, you know, Annadatura Kinta Chinnadatura Tikshna. Oh, amazing. <laughs> and and like, likewise, there's so many examples that you have given us and shows says that this is this is a piece of work that basically derives its essence from our Sanatana Dharma in itself. And what struck me the most is your narration of how on that quartet, like Baduku Jataka Bandi, and how it connects with the entire essence of the Indian philosophy, Jiva, uh, Jagatu, and Ishwara, and how you connected with the horse, the horse cart, and, and the rider. Uh, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. And, and the deciphering of the Jnana Mudra and related to the God, the Trigunas, and the that, that that really stuck with me a lot. I mean, I never thought about it. Maybe many other viewers have known about it, but for me, it was an eye-opening, definitely. And I'm sure all the viewers have felt in a very similar way about today's presentation. It was a really enlightening presentation. And on behalf of Jnana Sudha, please accept our humble gratitude for taking time to enlighten us on the essence of Mankuti Manakaga. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you. Um, at this time, I would also like to take the opportunity to thank uh, Sri Paramji and Sri Lakshmananji and all other trustees who are continuously supporting in sustaining this Jnana Sudha platform. And Sri Alakananda Ji, who is not here today, but who is um, who is is the uh, motivating factor behind this particular. Um, Jnana Sudha lecture series. Uh, I'd like to thank Sri Murli for preparing the intro video. Uh, Sri Ganesh Sri Ram for managing today's Zoom activities. Ravi Shankar, uh, Sri Ravi Shankar for preparing the brochure and conducting the Q&A. And other committee members who are not here probably, uh, uh, Sri Kishore Nath and Sri Gopinath uh, and all of with with all their support, today's program has been a successful one. So thank you very much to all of them. And before I conclude, um, I'd like to make just one announcement. You know, all of you who have been attending this Gyanasuja lecture know that for the last few months, we have been conducting lectures on regional philosophical works and how it connects with the Sanatana Dharma. Uh, perhaps this may be the fourth one in the series, if I am right. Our next lecture will be in June. You know, please stay tuned for the topic and at the date we will be announcing it uh, very soon. Um, I will hand it over to Sri Paramji next. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kaljogi. Uh, so, uh, for viewers' information, we were very lucky. Dr. Kaljogi is very in our neighborhood basically in Dallas, Texas. So, so we, we uh, had that uh, luxury of uh, listening to him from very close. As Ravi said, hope you will find another location to come all the way to Canada and Toronto. And uh, uh, thank you very much. I had come to Canada, sir. I had come to Canada, Toronto. Uh, okay. Some, some years ago, six, seven years ago, I had come for some other function. Okay. Now, now you have some more uh, friends <laughs> here, so please do come. Yes. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone, and uh, we will close the meeting for today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.